throw your uppercut Try to hit me in the gut Thinking that I won't react You whisper in my name Thinking I won't be the same To conviction in effect See what you didn't know Who's a side on ever show Slipping on your every jab So tighten up your fist Step into the ring with this I hope your mama's got your back I took a break, you're making a huge mistake Thinking you can take the throne Look at your trembling, step into the lion's den Bet you wish you stayed at home Begging for mercy underneath your breath When I ain't even sweating Yet my legend's written in the stone, yeah Your crying danger in defeat Is now your only friend Even your mama's gotta know Hey, Nick. Sean Spicer. Uh, I understand there's some controversy brewing about uh, how many subscribers you have on YouTube. You have more subscribers than anybody. And it's, it's probably the biggest, largest YouTube subscription that anybody's had. Um, there, but also, it's not numbers that matter, Nick. And I know everyone's going to quibble over this, because, but it's, it's content. It's, it's quality. And, and your subscribers are, are amazing. They're, they're great. They're high quality subscribers, and that's really what you have to look at. Don't just focus on the numbers. I mean, if people are spewing a bunch of fake news, just don't get in the mud. They're amazing folks. Their engagement, the way that they like the videos. Pfft. Anyway, I hope this puts puts this to the end. I, I hope that this controversy is over, and we know who the real YouTube subscriber champ is, and it's you, Nick. Good afternoon, or good evening, and welcome to In Time. I will say, I think we need a better spokesman than Sean Spicer. No offense, he was a former White House press secretary. Nonetheless, uh, I, I'm hoping we can do better. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, today, we're going to be discussing um, uh, post-theism and Christian atheism. And actually, I forgot, I, I wanted to do a poll. So I'm going to see if I can get a poll going. I, I did not ask our... Uh, uh, guest uh, Marianne, if she wanted to do one, I, I wasn't sure. Hopefully, she'll think of one while we're, we're discussing this. But I was thinking, at a minimum, an interesting poll would be: um, uh, Is cre uh, Christian atheism a contradiction in terms? Simply because that was a, an interesting discussion we got into on YouTube, and we'll see if people's opinions change on that from uh, before the show to the end. So I may uh, try to set. Uh, oh, Sorry, and, that assumes there's a, some kind of objective answer, though. Uh, oh, dear Lord, and we're, we're already starting, so... Um, yeah, 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 okay, stopping, stopping. Uh, so, um, we have, let's see, we have, coming up on Friday, we have 
We're going to be doing After Dark. We're going to start doing those every Friday, so it'll be call-in. We'll be able to have uh, guests come in, open hang, and just call in uh, and uh, give us a, a, a hard time, I guess, and troll certain people for having $200 suits, 200 being because I only need half the suit if I'm going to stream, but we won't get into how or why. <laughs> Um, and then we're also uh, going to be doing, uh, we're looking into doing a new show with, with, uh, Neil 604 Atheist. I think that's gonna be a lot of fun. He's gonna be joining us on the, on the Fridays and, uh, we may do call-ins. I, I don't know what we're going to do, but we got one coming up this Friday. Nadine Nate's going to be joining us and, and my hope is we can, we can roast some members of the community because I, I think quite frankly, there are just some inflated egos going on here. And every time I say that, for some reason, people think about me right off the bat. Don't know why. Hopefully Nadine Nate and I can correct that misconception. So, uh, in the meantime, post theism and, and oh, and actually, before I do get to that, one other thing, uh, we do we get demonetized. We get demonetized a lot. This one might be one of our first that doesn't get demonetized, but uh, this is an educational program. But we we, we uh, cover adult topics, and that is that is becoming increasingly discouraged on YouTube, and that is not a joke, unfortunately. But nonetheless. Um, we, we, as a rule, don't worry about the monetization. We want to provide the best content we can. So, you know, and you guys, if you've been watching for a while, you've seen guests will say, Oh, I'm not going to do this because of demonetization. And I sit there and say, don't, don't, no, let me worry about that. You, you go do your thing. So if you want to support this channel, like, and subscribe is a real easy way to do it right here and now, just because it helps us in the algorithm and, or you can become a patron and, uh, come to our patron hangouts, uh, once a month, you can, uh, come on our discord. We have a, a separate patron section and, uh, you know, either way, come join us on the discord and hang out. Marianne will be joining us on the discord afterwards. And in fact, I've noticed Randolph is in the, um, uh, live stream right now, and it's it's interesting because I suggested to Randolph that he meet uh, my guest uh, Marianne Ono, a, a rather unique Christian who also happens to live in Canada. So um, uh, Randolph and her share uh, just a just a unfortunate, you know, um, uh, consequence of of their birth for which they constantly apologize. At any rate, so um, tonight we are going to be discussing. Uh, Christian atheism, and I'm going to make a, a few assumptions about that, Marianne, thank you, and uh, Christian atheism, and uh, uh, what is it, post-theism, and uh, uh, what we're doing here is, for some reason, yeah, once again, the uh, window didn't quite open, but that's an easy fix, so uh, there is Marianne, Marianne, how are you? I am well, I'm very happy to be here, Nick. <laughs> so, um... Oh, oh, and uh, actually, uh, Randolph uh, said he wanted to join. So, Randolph, uh, uh, you know what? If uh, it's cool with Marianne, maybe in a little bit, uh, we can we can have you join. I want to give Marianne a, a chance to to hey. chat. But uh, you know what? Uh, yeah. And we got an echo, and I will guess as to why. So, hopefully, that will solve the echo problem. Um, okay, no, that wouldn't have solved it. So, let me take a look at the echo. But uh, Marianne, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I have to get to the religious part, I'm sure. But uh, as you said, I'm in Canada, and that I don't apologize for, but I do apologize for almost everything else. <laughs> um, let's see. I have known Nick. Uh, I may call him Miles during this program. I'm not going to get into the whole explanation why I did that once before, eating up too much time. Uh, but uh, yeah, I've known Nick slash Miles for, I don't know, three years, maybe? Oh, uh, no. <clears throat> but I got probably closer to five, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess. But, Is yeah. it? Uh, yeah, that sounds okay. about right. Well, you know what? Corona has completely... I, I have no sense of corona? time anymore. Uh, yeah, Cor yeah. The coronavirus, it, my, yeah, COVID-19. Yeah, my favorite drink. Oh, you meant... You meant I, I thought you well, meant... Well, I was going to say, yeah, yeah, beer does that too. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. And we met up. It's. It, this is going to tell you a bit about me, so that's why I'm bringing that in. Uh, well, hang on. Let me back up. So here in Toronto, Canada, uh, I work for the provincial government now. I previously worked, um, well, I guess I was a student midwife, not a midwife, but, you know, I was in midwifery care. So dealing with people of all kinds of backgrounds. Um, I was posted, I, I chose to be posted in various places. So I chose to be posted in North York, Ontario, which is very heavily, um, that particular community I was in was very heavily, heavily Orthodox Jewish. I chose to be posted down down in the um, southwest, uh, Sarnia Chatham area, where I was uh, working with a lot of Mennonite families. Um, so in terms of religion, like, oh, and uh, I had several opportunities, um, so more than one posting, um, that involved uh, Native communities. 
and that includes uh, a posting on Manitoulin Island where I was, you know, working, traveling around from, there's all kinds of reserves peppered there and I was traveling around from reserve to reserve and whole adventures, like lots of good stories. But uh, so from a religious standpoint, I've kind of got that background, um, grew up as a Roman Catholic, went to Catholic school, uh, the whole shebang. Uh, my mother's very disappointed that I didn't have a Catholic wedding. Um, although I married a, someone from the United Church and so did she. But anyway, um, you'd think we'd have more in common that way. But <clears throat> so I moved away from the Catholic Church and uh, got into Quakerism for a while. And I'm currently attending a United Church. I, uh, I joined as a member. But when I did so, I spoke to the minister there. He and I are actually pretty close. I mean, it, it not, I don't mean personally, but like we've had a lot of good chats. Uh, we know each other pretty well. And uh, yeah, I was pretty straightforward with him. I'm like, my heart is with the Quakers. But that said, you know, I really love the things you have to say. I learn all the time. And my husband's much more comfortable in the United Church. And we need to, you know, if, if we're going to make this part of our lives, I'd like to do it together. So it was very unlikely that my husband Christopher was going to be hauling ass down to the, the Quaker meeting. But, uh, you know, I joined the United Church and it's it's a great one. It's very, uh, very multicultural, very... Um, well, we'll talk about that probably. Yeah, well, the United Church, I would like to talk about that a bit because I don't think most Americans know what that is. And it, it's it's unique, uh, especially for the United States. I, I don't think we have a, a concept quite like that in religion. But let me let me ask what, oh, well, let me point closest, out. Probably closest. Yeah. Probably yeah. closest to the Episcopalians. Oh, okay, okay. I, I would have thought uh, Unitarians, but you can explain you can explain that one. So, uh, but what I what I found so interesting neat. was, well, when you when you and I first met. Um, and I was still just starting as an anti-theist. You know, I was aware I was an anti-theist. Oh, were you? Aware. You were just a baby at the time? Oh, well, I was so I... impressed. I'm like, this <laughs> this guy has all these memes and he's put all this thought into this. And now you're just telling me that you were just like... It, it, well, it was the codex. Baby yeah. Steps? yeah. Well, the codex. Yeah. I mean, I was, I, was, I, was, I, I was good. I had an idea of what I wanted to do and where I was going. But it was my first serious foray out into anti-theism as, as somebody who was, who was doing it as, as an actual thing, as opposed to just running around getting into fights with people. And one of the first things you did was you said, my church would like to know more about atheists and anti-theists. Why don't you come down and, and talk to them about it? I was just like, well, what do you mean? It's like, just, just during church, come up and, and, and we'll invite you up and, and you can talk, which you've since done with, well, with some atheists. To be fair, I think what I said was, I think they'd be interested. It's very much in line, but I'll mm. have to talk to our minister about it. Like, well, I, I'm not sure I extended an invitation so much as said, is this something you'd be interested in? If so, I will talk to them. Well, as I recall, they, they sort of uh, had accepted, but we ended up not being able to, to, to make it work. My schedule just got, got crazy. And but so I was I was I was. Yeah, I think conflating the, I think the, the larger story. No, that's OK. Um, I think uh, in terms of accepting or not, I think what what we did was say, we're interested, we'd love to have you talk. Um, it may fit into a service, uh, like an actual formal meeting, if you want to call it that. Um, or it may work better as we had this whole series of speakers that were speaking like, you know, in the later part of the day on Sundays. So I don't know that we ever settled on it. But yeah, I mean, it's the kind of thing that our folks would totally come out to. And I, and I mean, come out to learn, not come out to heckle and so not to, Yeah, yeah, I, I, I was genuinely impressed with that. So we don't really have a concept like that church in, in the U.S. So could you tell me a little bit more about it? Um, yeah, hang on. My husband's sort of coming and going. I need to see if there's anything happening. You don't need me? Okay. He's trying to be surreptitious right. about it, but yeah. Uh, right, well, sorry, and, uh, question so I did... is tell you more about the United Church? Uh, yes, but before we do um, that, so I was going to start a poll. So, um, I, and I had one, I had a couple of thoughts on it. And so, let me know what what you'd want to do for a poll. My first one is because we had a disagreement earlier. So, uh, you can drop one in the live chat if you think I'm right. Two if you think Marianne is wrong. So, um, <laughs> we'll put that poll up. And, yeah. Yeah. Let me. So let me get on that. But yeah, please yeah. continue. <laughs> And on that note, <laughs> way to this just is a totally unbiased. Way to just... This is a totally unbiased interview. You know, you, you know what? Uh, this is going to be nothing but professionalism. So please continue with why you're wrong. It never has been between us. I don't know why we would start now. <laughs> yeah, this would be. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. United Church. So uh, United Church in Canada is 
interesting because they're actually the amalgamation of different churches that had somewhat different philosophies. Um, and the idea was basically, we don't have, like from the very beginning, the idea of combining was, we don't have to agree on everything. We don't have to agree on doctrine um, beyond like certain minimums, uh, which have changed over the years, I must add. But uh, as long as we agree on kind of the general, what is our purpose for being here? You know, um, what are we trying to achieve? And is it something we can achieve better together? Mm -hmm. So from the get go, this was about diversity of opinion, where dissent was encouraged. Um, I know that you wanted to get to this later, but I'll mention that we got a lot of press in recent years um, because there's there was a big brouhaha about one of our ministers being openly atheist and saying, you know, I, I want well, she she'd been known well, to the, the yeah everybody knew for a while it was it was an open oh, secret for a long time yeah. and, and yeah. nobody made a stink about it it was just that you know once it hits the press like once it started getting attention i think the church said well we're gonna have to take a position on this what are we gonna do and they decided to do a review of her fitness which mm -hmm. to me in and of itself like i wasn't part of that politics but to me it makes sense if you're gonna have to say to the public here's the stance we're taking, that you would take a formal approach to it. And, and it's it was effectively like a hearing, right? Mm -hmm. um, to me, the, like that in and of itself doesn't strike me as being pro or con. It was certainly taken as con. And you know what? It may have been super con. I wasn't part of all that. But anyway, so they undertook this um, review of her fitness to continue on as a minister in the church. And the end result was uh, that, yeah, she has continued and she's got an openly atheistic congregation. And it's frankly not the only one. It's the most publicized one. But there are certainly other um, both congregants slash members and and leaders uh, in the United Church who will happily tell you that, you know, they question all kinds of things, including, you know, does does God exist? Um, you know, and, and a lot of them will we'll get into this later as well, but we'll take the attitude of does it matter? So this is the kind of dissent. And then, uh, oh, to give you a sense of the other end of the spectrum. All right. Mm. So that's the kind of agnostic um, and, and a few identifying as atheists, but certainly an awful lot of agnosis in the United Church. To give you a sense of the spectrum, on the other end, my husband's parents, so my father-in-law and mother-in-law, attend an atheist, uh, I almost said atheist church, they'd kill me, um, <laughs> attend a United Church, um, so same church, United Church of Canada, I must say, not the uni United X's or Y's. I know there's others that use the name. Um, they attend a United Church of Canada church uh, up in Markham, not far from Toronto. And it is, I've, I've been there, I've talked to the minister there. It is pretty, pretty conservative, pretty traditional. I don't think they'd question most of what you tend to hear from, say, evangelicals in the United States. Maybe not the frothing at the mouth of evangelicals, but, uh, you know, the, the bare bones of, of evangelical doctrine they would agree with. So that's, that's an enormous range, right? That's all just about the whole range of Christianity, leaving out all the hierarchy of the Catholic Church and so on. Uh, and nonetheless, we consider ourselves like a family. So in that we all want to work towards the same objectives, even if we don't all agree on doctrine. And people do tend to gather into, you know, you can call a local church congregation, almost like a in the non-religious language, like a clique or a social group, you know? Mm -hmm. So they do gather according to their views, or, or we do gather according to our views, we tend to, but uh, in terms of the overall church, there's no us and them. It's it's just we're a lot of people. Well, and I, I think that's fascinating. I think that would be very difficult to pull off in the U.S., especially with the, with the ones on, on the, the, the further to the right, because so evangelicals, you know, for the most part are are by their beliefs, at least the understanding here, they're kind of required to proselytize and they're required to try to get people to to convert. And it seems to me that that would kind of ruin the picnic. But and so if it's if there are atheists there, and if there is an atheist minister, how is it mm -hmm. a church? Aha. Well, do you want to drop the link in now? People read it later. I, I, I'm only asking because uh, I'd love to have your attention. <laughs> but uh, I did give Miles here a link to an article. Now, I got to tell you, this was published in the United Church of Canada's magazine, which is about the least prosel proselytizing. 
How do I pronounce Pro that? A magazine you can imagine. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I mean, so much of it is just, it's just ethics and, you're, and you're, it's not pushing any particular point of view. But anyway, well, um, this on, is their on. magazine so, called so Marianne, Marianne is a writer. So you, you guys have two writers on this show, <laughs> two writers on this show for the price yes. of one. And neither of us can figure it the fuck out. Anyways, please continue. Well, part of being a writer is having read a lot. And part of a reading is not knowing how things are pronounced because you see them on the page. And you never have heard <laughs> yeah. them. So no, honestly, I think when people struggle... They have the vocab, but struggle with the pronunciation. Mm. You tend to go, that's a reader and possibly a writer. Okay, <laughs> so it's, I had given you a link to post-theistic spaces are sacred, yes, but are they church? Which is the question you just asked. And they, that is that's in broad in, view. That's in the description already. It? So anyone who wants to, to see it, it's already posted in the description because some people run a professional YouTube channel, Marianne, <laughs> just saying. I'm not well, bitter. I don't Not run better. one at all, but okay. Did you did you make fun of um, me for what I said earlier about the Discord? You did. You were totally giving me a hard time. I about did. The Discord. I did before yeah. the show. He called it bitch cord. I did. I, 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 I didn't call it that. It was a slip of the tongue. It, it was it, a, to, to be fair. It was a slip of the tongue. I can't, <laughs> we were talking about bitching, and then he just came out with bitch cord, and then, yeah. yeah, it was fun. Yeah, okay. Right. Um, but hang on. If we can get back to the topic, my friend. I think that's a good um, idea. So. In this article, so I'm going to read you the title, which I know has been posted or should be visible to you somehow with the link, but I want to read everyone the subtitle, okay? So title, then subtitle. Title, post-theistic spaces are sacred, yes, but are they church? Subtitle, spirituality has overtaken God in a handful of united churches. While some people find hope in this trend, others see it as a break with Christianity. And right there is the dissent, right? But we're not going to fracture over it because we just we have dissent about all kinds of things and i'm not sure this is the biggest <clears throat> so yeah okay uh, did that answer what you want to know about the it United did Church? it did and i'd like to i mean i know there's a lot you want to say so i'm just sort of sort of going in sort of the the, the basic directions for just sort of a primer and i'm sure we're going to get some questions and i do want to bring randolph in so randolph i'll just so, sort of start to prep with you but i also really want to make sure that marianne gets to gets to, to to do her thing but i think you're, you're going to have a lot to contribute there is a reason i wanted to get the two of you uh chatting with each other so um but hey uh, yeah mm -hmm. please can, can I, uh, I need to add one more thing before we get off the topic of the United Church, though. And I'm, believe it or not, I'm on Wikipedia for this. This is sad that I don't know my own church's history. I know it was the amalgamation of three churches. I just wanted to tell you, four churches. I wanted to tell you which ones, okay? Mm -hmm. So four Protestant denominations. Some of these may sound familiar to you in the U.S. or wherever you might be. Uh, okay, founded in 1925 as a merger of four Protestant denominations, the Methodist Church, the Congregational Union of Ontario and Quebec. I, I don't know what that was back then. Two thirds of the congregations of the Presbyterian Church. So we still have a Presbyterian Church in Canada. Uh, it's smaller. The United Church, I think after the Roman Catholic, uh, is the second biggest church in Canada. Um, so there's more of us, and we took two-thirds of the Presbyterians back in 1925. Oh, and we the fourth one was the Association of Local Union Churches, a movement of the Prairie Provinces. Oh, wait, and then in the 60s, somebody else joined us because we're so popular, and that was the Canadian Conference of... Have you heard of these guys? The Evangelical United Brethren Church. So just to give you a sense of if you've heard of any of them, um, there are some commonalities, but that's a pretty diverse group. Okay, so, thank you. So, so, okay, so, well, I want to I wanna get on because at least what I think is, is going to, so first of all, you, you have a tendency to, on occasion, rare, rare occasion, trigger people on Twitter. <laughs> And oh, it's usually daily, daily, <laughs> daily. <laughs> like by yes. the minute from what I can tell. But usually it's with it's with first of all, because you don't shy, shy away from controversy and you're well aware that you're the, the atheists yeah. who <laughs> half the atheists glom onto you because they're like, wow, here is a theist who <laughs> is ostensibly a theist who is really nice and awesome and and, and uh, forward thinking. And then everyone else is like, she doesn't necessarily believe in God. How the hell is she a theist? So. Yeah, that, I'm not that's sure what, yeah. that that's what they get upset about. <coughs> mm. I think those that's the that's the topic, but I think what it, there's two things that upset people. There's mm -hmm. the simple answer and then the difficult one. The simple answer is that 
I refuse to get offended. I don't see the point in getting offended. And I refuse to speculate. Okay, so those two together, that's the simple answer. So, you know, I think I think a lot of these people are used to getting into these battles on Twitter where people are like, well, if you think that you're an idiot and, you know, and and suddenly they're in this conversation where no matter what they say, the person's like either that's a good point or I'm not sure you've thought that through. And they're like, fuck, this isn't going the way I expected. Um, but the bigger thing is that I question just about everything and I don't <clears throat> think they're used to being questioned on certain points. At least not questioned um, well, yeah. Well, yeah. So when I say, well, but when you say X, what are you, what are you assuming there? Um, there's, there's often a pause and then it's like, you're trying to deflect from, you know, your own lack of knowledge. And I'm like, well, you know, sh kettle pot, you know, but, um, but if instead, again, instead of getting offended, I'm just like, yeah, but could we look at that for a minute? And people go wild, like really nasty. <laughs> <laughs> and and a few times Nick has jumped in and just been like, um, yeah, just so you know, she's not insane. <laughs> <laughs> that's not usually what I what I have to say, but um, no, it is. Well, no, but well, that's the general theme. I, I, I'm not sure yeah. I would go that far out on a limb, but um, fair what enough. I, <laughs> fair um, enough. Uh, what I what I what I say, and I always mean this when I say it, is you're genuine. So when you're asking these questions, they're not gotcha questions. And, and uh, when you say, yes. for example, that you're usually, yep. And when you say that you're a Christian um, atheist, you are not trying to cause trouble. And they're like, well, how can anyone say that without trying to cause trouble? It's just like, I don't know how or why I'm not opining on what your beliefs are compared to hers. What I'm saying is she's not and I'll, I'd, I'd easily stake my reputation on that. And if that's not enough to continue a conversation with her, don't. But uh, that much I, I would I would stand by. So yeah. <laughs> so but, you know, know. Pe people really, ha it's so hard to let go of their preconceptions. Like I spell Christian on Twitter with an X. Used to be because there was there used to be the 140 character limit, and I just got tired of typing it out and it eating up so much of my you know those extra few letters mattered. Um, and now. Uh, as I've learned more, I kind of like the fact that that the reason why that came to be used um, way back, I mean, we're talking, you know, in the very early church, uh, is that, you know, parchment was expensive. And if you were going to be recording things, um, you know, anything you could do to abbreviate <clears throat> was helpful. So I kind of like that feeling of when I write on Twitter, I'm kind of, you know, slightly communing with scribes of, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Um, but yeah, people get all over it and they're like, you spell it with an X, that means you're a fake Christian. Because if you're a real one, you'd spell it out completely. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. yeah. You're not kidding. I've, I've seen that one used against you. I've seen a large number of really arguments that as an atheist and as an anti-theist um, yes. really actually trigger me. It, it triggers me. I was just yes, like, they, yeah. this this guy does not represent me and his feelings do not. I just want to, like, oh, you're just trying to virtue signal. I like, I'm really not. I'll, I'll, you know, I've, I've argued with the best of them, but... Um, yeah. so, but you know what, yeah. I, but I actually, um, but then I'll bring in like, okay, here's a reference. Like, here's an article that will explain it to you, and then that's when they go ballistic. Yes. They're just Especially, like, oh my god, facts. And, and no, you, yeah. can't, you can't be... Christian, you can't identify as Christian and throw facts at me that I can't dispute. Well, so, including, but not but limited this to isn't everyone. Okay. I'm not, I'm not lumping everyone. I'm just saying this happens way too much. Well, and we, you know, we had also pointed out that the founding fathers were not necessarily Christian and that there's an argument. So uh, Christian atheism yeah. is in fact a thing and you can look it up and there've been articles on it. It's not a big thing, but it's a growing thing. And um, I had pointed that out and I said that you could make the argument that Jefferson and others who were ostensibly deist were actually Christian atheists, which is to say that they believed in the values of Christianity, but they did not believe in, and they may have believed that, for example, Jesus uh, was in fact real and that he had real values, but not necessarily that he died in was resurrected. In fact, all the miracles were pulled out of Jefferson's Bible, and you can today buy the Jefferson Bible by Thomas Jefferson, founding father, where yeah. all of the miracles are pulled out because he did not believe in them, despite ostensibly being a Christian. Do you know what else you can buy? <laughs> you can buy, sorry, I'm always dragging you off topic, but no, this no, is kind of no. cool. Yeah. You can buy the color-coded Bible 
um, as uh, coded or colored by the Jesus Seminar, which was a bunch of people, mostly religious scholars, but some not, um, some historians, uh, who were trying to assess how much of the stuff seemed um, like coherent in the sense of at the time it would have made sense at the time in the historical context and it all fits together and what stuff is like dubious and what stuff is just clearly like stuck in later or otherwise doesn't fit. Mm. Well, so, so that's kind of neat. Th that is, and there's uh, Amy Newman is doing the Skeptics Annotated uh, uh, Bible and she appears to be adding her own little stuff. Um, I, I don't think yeah, she's yeah. taking it very seriously, but at any rate, um, so what, what do you, so the, the two questions I want to ask, and since they're very closely related, I figure I'll ask them both. So if, if atheists are allowed, and in, in fact, uh, can even be a minister, what, what are the atheists attempting to accomplish at a church like that? And then what do you mean when you say that you are a Christian atheist? How do you, how do you reconcile those two terms? You don't but reconcile don't those two. That. I, oh, no, I, oh. I don't say that I'm a Christian atheist. I, I am an, huh, uh, I'm a couple of things, but apatheist is the closest. And that is a word. Okay. <laughs> I thought oh, well. I invented it. I was very sad that I hadn't. Um, but yes, okay. So first of all, you want to know um, what the, let's see, what the ministers of such churches are trying to accomplish. Uh, I don't think I'd try to speak for all of them, but I can tell you that I've read a lot of what Greta Vosper is trying to accomplish. She mm -hmm. is the minister I mentioned earlier who got, you know, went through the review of fitness and big news in Canada. Anyway, uh, let's see. And she is mentioned in that article that's been posted, the post-theistic spaces. Uh, I know what she's trying to accomplish, and I actually have one of her articles open here because I wanted to quote from it. So just give me a second. Oh, huh. Okay. You know what? This isn't her. <laughs> this is a, another, um, another religious leader in Toronto. Maybe it's just the water in Toronto. No, no, no. No, it's a global thing, but uh, okay. So say it's the it's the post theistic spaces article. But I was just uh, as I was looking for Vosper, I found Gallinger, who's another well known one. I think he's now retired, but I'm going to say Reverend Ken Gallinger leads the congregation at Lawrence Park Community Church in North Toronto, or he did back then. Um, here's what he says: What we're trying to create here is a safe space for people to talk about how do we develop develop. <laughs> I got to slow down here. Slow down. What we're trying to create here is a safe place for people to talk about how do we develop an authentic spirituality without a guy in the sky. Now, what people mean by spirituality, that's hugely variable, right? Um, people tend to talk about, uh, about you know, spirituality as a, a, a sense of unity, a sense of common purpose, uh, like mission, um, a sense of interconnectedness. I mean, but everyone defines it differently. I think you'll find, though, that um, atheistic or agnostic uh, religious congregations will tend to talk about, if they use the word spirituality at all, use it in that sense. Uh, I also gave you an audio clip. Did you want to drop that in right now? Sure. Uh, so let's play the audio clip. And before we do, uh, we did get a super chat from Sinister Porpoise, but the, we have a little bit of a lag on the chat here. So I'm going to catch up with the chat while the clip is playing. Oh, Randolph, well, while you've... Yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. And, and Randolph is is prepared to, to enter. Randolph, I've sent you a... a a tweet, and what I figure is, if it's all right, we'll bring you in in maybe, maybe about 20 minutes. I, I, and the reason, again, is I'd really like uh, Marianne to finish with, with her part of it, but I really think there'd be value in having the two of you here. So I hope you'll be patient and wait, and I will absolutely send you a link. In fact, I've already prepped uh, the, the window for you. So what were you going to say, Marianne? Sorry, I, I just misunderstood what you were saying about catching up. I thought it meant oh. that you were going to be like offline for a few seconds, so I was going to suggest something in the meantime. But oh. uh, hang on a second. Before you play that audio, can we tell them what it's from? Please. Or did you want to do that? No, I, yeah, I, well, I, I, mean, I find it, I like the mystery. I like the mystery, so I like to just play random audio <laughs> clips from like that I've just gotten off of. The, and it works great. <laughs> it works great until I, I, until it's accidentally from OnlyFans, okay, and then it's a problem. And then what it's from OnlyFans, Love you, babe. That's, that's when everybody recognizes it. They all get it when it's from OnlyFans, but when it's from like CNN, nobody under, I don't know. Uh, anyway, yes. Okay, I, I'm ready when you uh, say, describe it. 
all my love. <coughs> I would have expected nothing less. Um, okay, well, no, you know what? You do it. You're on a roll, man. You go. Uh, I, I'd, I'd have to make it up. You, I, I, I don't know what this clip is. I you mean, have I to make it up. I did send it to you half an hour before the show. What the hell? I didn't get a chance to um, listen to it. I was oh. trying to prep so we could have a professional show. I don't know why I wanted one, considering you're the guest, but I, I thought it might be a nice change of pace. Okay. Do you think everyone's enjoying listening to us um, to be our usual bitchy selves? Uh, hang on. I am opening my – this is really silly, guys, but I am opening my mail, my Google Mail, because I just uh, sent him a description of what this audio clip is, and rather than make it up, I'm going to read it. I, I didn't get no description. She's lying. I, I, uh, but guys, listen, I, uh, if I, she sent a description, you know I would probably be honest about it, and, and I didn't see a description Okay. There. <laughs> I'm in trouble. I'm I don't in so I've, much trouble. You haven't, I want to get murdered. You after really the show, are, but... man. Okay, let me read <laughs> what it's what I said. Would you be able to play the attached MP3 during tonight's show? It's roughly one minute and twenty seconds. That's how long y'all have to run to the bathroom if you don't want to hear it. Um, and it, then it says excerpted <laughs> from the following interview of a post theist slash post post atheist Quaker. Again, Quaker's near and dear to my heart. This is not the only branch one, of post One in the theism. live chat, if that counts as a description. Mm -hmm. Two, if that's not a description of what we're listening to, just the source. One, if I'm right. Two, if she's wrong. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm very sorry. nice. I'm bitter. But uh, yeah, and to give credit, uh, I am now actually opening the link to the original. It is from something called Northern Spirit Radio. I actually don't know a darn thing about them, but they are uh, an online, they do an awful lot of stuff about unions and they are interviewing someone who is involved in a union, but is also a Quaker who identifies as post-theist, post-atheist. Okay, go. All right, Cue. perfect. And before before we do that, Sinister Porpoise, $2 <laughs> super chat, I finally caught up because Marianne was just, you know, okay. Um, <laughs> are you sharing this money by the way, Miles? <laughs> I, I'm gonna, I am gonna get, so get murdered. Um, uh, am I share? Am I sharing this money? Um, we are yeah, donating it. Get, like to, a cut of the. We're, we're donating <laughs> it to to uh, Seals Without Borders, um, and it's it, <laughs> and the, the the puppy puppies for atheism. Um, so two dollars super chat. Um, uh, oh, and I just of course since I was talking, it got moved off. Uh, uh, Sinister Porpoise. Twitter is for snark. Yeah, um, she's she. You know what? She can actually keep up with you for for snark. Um, I, I I was trying to figure out because you know I, I porpoise. I just uh, and it's it's funny because uh, when I very first heard of porpoise, she was was a little unkind to a friend of mine. Uh, unkind may or may not be the the appropriate. That's just as polite as I could put it. But the snark was so funny that I, it was just sort of a guilty pleasure to watch. Despite that, I was like, you know. You know, okay, it's a it's a friend of mine that she's talking about, but nonetheless, she's actually being kind of funny. I'm trying to figure out why I I, I like the snark. Now I figured it out. Now I figured it out. There's another. Vo it reminded me of another voice. At any rate, um, thank well, you. She and uh, I so have to have a snark off. And by the way, I have uh, uh, her um, uh, Marianne's Twitter is in fact in the description. So please join that Ooh. Twitter and watch. The, I, I mean, popcorn. It is one of the better popcorn ones because she's just being so honest and sincere. And Twitter's just like, and getting have, ripped on. You can't have that. Just, what just the? like eviscerated. Oh, it's just the more honest and sincere you are, the more you. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It actually isn't funny, but the more you put your heart on your sleeve, the more Twitter's just like, who the fuck does she think she is, being all happy and go lucky on Twitter? <laughs> and I wish I, I wish I was yeah. kidding. It's not really as much of a joke as it sounds. But at any rate, please do take a look at that. We've got the audio, so let's play the audio. And um, uh, it should, you know, we should have no troubles, everybody uh, hearing that. Both negative and positive projection into others and into our images of God. So it's a useful concept in that we look at everything that's good, that's groovy, that's loving, that's sweet, that's kind into God. Some people also project fear and jealousy and anger. Whatever you want, you can find it in the Bible and you can project it into one's notion of God. So I experience the word God as a symbolic notion that is very easy for me to turn into idolatrous notions, some sort of self-serving projection for myself rather than something that opens me up to be more loving, better at community building. So my notion of God right now for what it's, when it's useful is it something that opens me up to be 
more loving and building more community at whatever level of abstraction, whether it's global or in my neighborhood or my Quaker meeting. Beyond that, so I used to be very allergic to the word God and Jesus and things like that for a while in my atheist mm -hmm. phase and even in part of my post-atheist phase. Now I'm okay. I, I can go back. I can sing the old hymns I used to sing from the Lutheran hymnal. I can do that, and, and I simply reinterpret the words. That's what everyone else is doing all the time. I'm just honestly doing it now. Um, I, I'm going to make it mean what works for me now. There you go. All right. So I, uh, so I find Hello? that in Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, there was okay. just this silence. It's so weird to hear, to hear you not. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, the the, uh, the notion that I could shut up for even 30 seconds is, is, is yes. mind-boggling, including to most of our audience, who's, who's, who knows me pretty well by now. But um, so uh, what, what you have here is, is so now is his views, do you, are you suggesting that they are closer aligned to your views or closer aligned to the, the uh, Universalist Church of Canada? Universalist Church. Uh, oh, did I say you? No, okay. I'm sorry. I... First, first of all, I'm not claiming anything about the views of the United Church of Canada because, as I said, it goes all the way from like outright atheist, although albeit that's albeit that's a pretty tiny fraction, right? Um, through all kinds of agnosis, that's a huge like chunk. People just questioning everything, everything, um, right out to, you know, super, super uh, traditionalist conservatives. So it would be ridiculous to claim anything about the church's views as a whole. Um, but I, I am saying that if we're going to be talking about atheism and uh, post-theism, which we really should define at some point uh, mm. in religion, then... I wanted to give you the sense of how just how some people are thinking. And this is certainly something that I'm very familiar with. I've met lots of people with these particular views, uh, and they're very close to mine, yes. Now, now this person identifies as post-theist. Is this a good time to do that definition? I would I, really I, like I think to. I, I'd like to. Can, uh, can I ask you just a, a, a hopefully it's going to be a quick question. I doubt it's going to be quick. But, but before we start, just to give some context, do you identify as Christian and yes. the, it, for most Christians, the the minimum bar, a, a necessary, not necessarily sufficient, but a necessary condition for being Christian is the belief that Jesus Christ was in fact resurrected. And without that that firm belief, that even quote knowledge, you would not be a Christian. Uh, do you do you have that belief? And if not, what's your response to the people who say you are not a Christian? I don't claim certainty that Jesus existed, much less was resurrected. So, <clears throat> oh. I mean, I, I'm not claiming he didn't exist. I think that uh, when I watch the debates about the uh, so-called evidence, I, I think it's shaky as hell. Um, I think he might very well be a composite character, uh, but here, okay, let's let's get into the apathyism th thing here. Okay, apathy and theism. Put it together. You got apathyism. All right. It's the idea that this stuff doesn't matter. Uh, um, and, you know, I'm certainly not, I'm not some kind of unicorn. I really need to emphasize that. Um, this may be a minority view, but it is by no means like a, a uh, I don't know, what's the word for it? Like extraordinarily rare view, at least in, in the circles I run in, which granted, you know, I'm, I'm not in, say, the Bible Belt of the U.S., probably shouldn't even say that because I know nothing about it, but that does seem to be, you know, there seem to be some real trends there. The trends in the circles I run in are that people question a lot. Um, if, if a person attends a service at the church I'm at, the, Uni the United Church I'm at in Toronto, our minister will quite happily, like when he's doing his sermon, which is really more of a like <coughs> background talk, about you know what what's the context of these stories um he questions everything you know anything comes up and he's like well we we don't know that but why does it matter like why do we even why does that symbol even exist and goes off in that direction but never really makes a claim of fact and i don't make claims of fact because i don't think it matters <coughs> so the idea of apathyism is um and you know what I'm just going to pull up a sentence from Wikipedia. Uh, it is more of an oh, attitude Lord. rather than a belief claim or <coughs> belief system. So, so one can be a theist, apatheist, in the sense of 
pretty sure there's a God. I behave as if there is, but frankly, I don't think it's worth fussing over, right? To an atheist apatheist, to it's, it's an attitude. It's not so much, you know, whether you do or don't hold a belief. Uh, yeah. So just so because you wanted a short answer, you didn't get one. <laughs> Oh, I, 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 I wasn't expecting when I say that so that people don't sit there and say, you know, I, you know what, I'm going to go bail. I want them to stick on the show. So it's like, it's going to be a short answer. It'll be like, well, and besides that, for us, that is a short answer. That's like, that's like under 20 minutes. Um, I did. <clears throat> so Sinister Porpoise, uh, now this didn't have a super chat. I am willing to just donate $2 of my own because this is just, this is. So I will, will say $2 super chat, Sinister Porpoise, quote, the early church had one a 140 character limit. Um, I think you did a, <laughs> you did a dangling modifier there, and and so Sinister Porpoise decided to do a dangling and modifier. I, yeah, yeah. That's and I why, call that's myself why. a writer. Yes, sorry. That see what I mean? Though that's that that she just she just proved my point. So um, all right, now you had said that we were uh, so I, I you didn't answer the second question, and I do want to get onto what you had suggested, which was uh, what is post theism. But the second question is, what do you say to people who say you are not a Christian? We did have in the live chat someone who did say, in fact. Christian atheism would be a contradiction in terms of whether it, whether or not you self-identify as that. Maybe you could, but how how do you deal with the charge you're not a Christian because you do not you do not demand uh, you do not claim knowledge that Jesus uh, was risen. All right. Uh, well, first of all, language is messy. I mean, especially English. Um, when we're t when you're, we speak a language where fat chance and slim chance mean the same thing. You know, it's holding people to a literal um, or, or archaic definition or traditional, if you don't want to call it archaic, um, in that it's still held by many people, um, I think is unhelpful. Our language is as interesting and, um, you know, as, as uh, expressive as it is because it has developed over time, you know, and, and so we've we've absorbed a lot from the Bible and from Shakespeare and from, you know, we, what's, what's the saying? Um, only it was about grammar and not vocabulary, but it was like, um, English doesn't borrow from other, other languages. It corners them in a dark alley and, and, uh, <laughs> and rifles through their pockets for spare change. Yep, yeah. Yep. <clears throat> so yeah. I guess what I'm saying is if we want to hold to extremely strict, um, definitions and we want to say but that's what you know paul said it was in the letter to whoever and that's what the early early christian church said um you know i would hope we could move on from there i don't know why we would want to evolve in other ways and then be completely static when it comes to religion but i, I you know what if people want to say i'm not a christian i'm not going to get bothered about it uh, i i mean i mean it works for me um it enables me to have interesting conversations like this one. Uh, it, uh, you know, it has meaning for me. I, I, I don't know. Why would I fuss about this? Well, you're on Twitter. I think there's a, there's um, the terms of service says that you're supposed to get outraged and attack people when they, when they say you're not what you say you are, but that's uh... all right, Randolph. I got, I got the message and I'll, so what I want to do is I'm going to send Randolph the link and we we'll, should have that in about two or three minutes. If that's, if that's, if that's cool with you, cause I think he is, so he's the head of Christian atheists. He uh, advocates okay. among other things, and he's been on the show several times. One of the things he does advocate for uh, what his, his primary goal, he is not an anti-theist actually in, in, in one of the, what most Americans would consider one and his principal advocacy is for normalizing atheism for for making it just okay to be an atheist as it is okay to be a Christian as it is okay to be anything else which he which he argues in, in society it really isn't considered okay and he he uh, to the best of my knowledge and I'll, I'll let him uh, come in and uh, but he he um, is is very much for finding friends and allies uh, anywhere he can find them and uh, so I'd, I'm gonna send him the link and we should have him in uh, uh, in just a minute. So you wanted to define. I think this was a good idea. Um, post theism. Well, it's super important because there are two very different definitions, and I don't want people to be confused about what we're talking about here. So um, I promise I won't read to you this time, but I do need to reference. Uh, okay. So the there is a traditional use of the word um, post theism, and I'm not 
I don't have my reference, this reference in front of me. I know it goes back several decades. Um, it is the idea that humanity has moved beyond the question of whether an, or should have moved on, right? Beyond the question of whether or not there are gods. Um, let's see, it's, it's making a stronger claim than atheism. In the, I mean, a, a being without, as I'm sure your audience knows, right? Without gods. This is the, the attitude that gods are um, no longer relevant, that, that we use them for a purpose as humanity, and that at least some, if not all of us, uh, no longer see them as being useful in that sense and are actively saying we have moved beyond that concept. We no longer should even be arguing the concept. It's a waste of time. Let's focus on, uh, you know, what the purpose is we needed them for and how can we meet that purpose today? So that's the traditional definition is humanity has moved on beyond religion. Okay. Uh, okay. Yep. And then that is very, I, see, I learned that relatively recently. So I've been using the term post-theism in the sense that I originally learned it, which is somewhat you know, common, at least I can find an awful lot of references, but it is different. Uh, and it is, hang on a second. Here we go. Okay. Um, so post the, the definition that I, or, or the concept that I came across and that speaks to me m much more is the idea that theism as, whether it's monotheism or polytheism, or polytheism, but theism as the idea of sort of a um, a superior uh, viewpoint, like my monotheism beats your polytheism beats your atheism, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. is unhelpful. And so that we move beyond that kind of comparative or, or mm. competitive approach. This time I am going to read to you just because I love it. Post, uh, post theism wants to constructively engage with people of other religions as well as the spiritual but not religious or simply not religious, cooperatively discovering metaphors and vocabulary that are more meaningful today. So finding ways to, um, to pursue common purpose, uh, but with a grounding in, if somebody wants to describe that in terms of God, uh, as in the audio clip you played where the guy said, when I'm building community, that is, you know, that is God to me, that is God working through me, or however he might phrase it, um, that we don't get stuck on that, that a post-theist post is saying, we don't need to be stuck on these concepts, we need to um, find ways to work together beyond the, those divisions. I do apologize. The the your camera keeps cutting out on our side. It's not on your side. Randolph oh. is having a difficult okay. time connecting, and as he tries, it's it it has been. So I'm gonna Randolph. I'm gonna send you the uh, the the beta version, which actually oh, seems to be. Oh, he just wrote. One... I'm in. Oh, oh, did he write? At least I, I just saw. I saw uh, that on YouTube. Okay, I didn't see him, but uh, he does keep connecting. Um, and I, you know, I actually hear the I hear the connection, but I don't see the camera, which suggests to me that he's not in. But hey. You know, he could, he could, um, let's see, yeah, I see, yeah, he's, he's, uh, his, his camera here is not on. So if he's in, um, I don't see any of it. It did say the, the, um, system told me that he was in. So, but, um, I didn't see the camera and then I just here. So let me, let me keep working on it with him. But, uh, so you, you were saying. Uh, I was describing the differences between traditional post-theism and how I've more commonly and recently seen it used. Um, I don't know that I have much more to say about that. Uh, I mean, the idea that humanity has moved beyond religion, here's the problem. Mm -hmm. For me, the problem is that sets up the very divisions that the people using the more expansive idea of post-theism are trying to avoid. We're trying to move beyond those divisions and say, but what are the commonalities? So as soon as you say, hey, this group of people has evolved beyond that group of people, I think you're setting up the barriers that need to be knocked down. So and that's, that's why I wanted to distinguish the two. I think that's an interesting point. Um, and I, I, I see what you're saying. So that but just by by you're implying that that it's superior than than the people who who have religious beliefs which is something that uh you're you're trying to avoid because that's it's part of the very nature of the inclusiveness to not make those kinds of claims so um what about 
anti-theists who say it's still religion, even if it's a, essentially a form of maybe deism, uh, it's still religious, it's still spiritual, ergo, it's religious. That post the that post theism is, well, but one can be a post one can be a post theist atheist. See, well, I mean, you can be an atheist in that you don't personally hold any um, belief in gods, mm -hmm. right? And you can be post theist in the sense that um, the viewpoint, setting aside that traditional viewpoint of we've evolved past it, you can hold the other viewpoint that the whole argument about that the whole divisions over God and, and, you know, making that such a huge part of society and so on is um, unhelpful and, and that we need to find ways to hear the language. So if someone religious is talking about God, to not get caught up in the word God and start saying, well, that person's got, you know, they believe in fairy tales and all the rest of it. They may very well. I don't know. Um, but to be listening for what is what is it their what need are they expressing what purpose are they expressing how can we how can we not get so tied up in language and 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 um, these very strict definitions of when someone says God they mean this and therefore anything <coughs> they say is that well right? on, on, so that it's it's an attitude it's uh, so you can be atheist and have that attitude. I, I, well, that's well, and I think unless you're an anti-theist, I would hope most atheists would kind of have that attitude. I think that you know the anti-theist is the one who who has, on some level, more of the attitude that you know that it's it's a problem that needs to be addressed. So, I'm not saying yeah. it doesn't need to be addressed. In, in that, you know, as much as we can say, hey, let's move beyond this. I recognize that there are many jurisdictions and certainly places even close to home um, here in Canada where religion is used to abuse. Uh, it is, uh, I mean, we have a, I went through the Catholic school system. It's not like, you know, it's not like this isn't an issue in Canada. Right now, we, have you heard about this in the, in the States? Um, there was a discussion, uh, discovery of over 200 um, bodies of children at an Indian residential school. Yes, um, I, I did hear yeah. about that. It's gotten a lot of press, and I think those of us who understand the issues realize that's not going to be the only discovery, and that an awful lot of these schools, like the vast majority, were operated by churches. So, and this is not ancient history. These things, yeah. there, there is abuse happening now. I'm not saying that none of this is important. I am saying that when we can stop bickering about what a word means and get to what is it we're trying to what are our needs and purposes and what is it we're trying to do here um i think that's much more useful and um do you see what i'm saying i just didn't want to leave the impression that i'm saying oh we've all moved beyond religion it's not an issue anymore it's very much yeah. an issue all right well what i'm going to do now so um i have i've actually figured out the problem with randolph it doesn't let Canadians in. Um, I don't know how you <laughs> slipped through the system. No, we, we actually, the um, there's, uh, uh, he has a firewall that is blocking the signal. And you can ask how I can be so assured of that. There's a backup system if you uh, have a firewall. The only problem is it creates a, a significant delay between all of the guests. It slows everybody down. And so I disabled the backup and said never accept anyone on the backup. And that causes exactly what we're having. And that only happens when some Canadian trying to connect has a firewall. So I've actually put, established the backup so he will connect as soon as he does. It's actually going to increase lag for all of us. That's fine. I, I guess I'd be willing to put up with a little lag to have Randolph in. But, you know, he, he owes me one. You better apologize. You know I want an apology uh, is what I want. I think you need to acknowledge that Jig4D just gave you 10 bucks and oh. raised a really good point. Well, he, he I think, that we, was, do, I think yep. we need to address that point. All right. So uh, Super Chat, $10, Jig4D, to broaden the term uh, Christian so far as to include atheists is to lose most of the value of the word. Um, and hello, Randolph. So I do want to do that, but I want to make sure that we got audio and Randolph is, is chatting and he is um, showing how manly he is with his construction all behind him. And I'm building this from scratch because Canada. 
Oh, hush. No, no, no. no. You know, Carl okay, Sagan, you know what, if you, you know what? want to make an apple pie, you must, from scratch, you must the universe. <laughs> oh, the, the audio is cutting in and out there, right? Now. You may need to get a little closer to it, um, but if, 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 if yeah. Randolph, with your um, <laughs> your kind indulgence, since Miles here keeps slamming on Canada, I really must very quickly, much more quickly uh, than last time, tell you folks why I call him Miles. And he calls me Kim, and that's miles and kilometers. And it started off because I was pointing out how behind the U.S. is in being the only industrialized country that uh, still predominantly uses the imperial system. So you slam on Canada all you want, and I will continue to call you Miles. Deal? <laughs> um, well, I'm, I'm going to say deal because <laughs> you're going you're to call me Miles anyway. So the answer is yes, well. deal, because that's the only way I get anything out of it. I, I apologize. Uh, that all cut out on me. I'm not sure this view data. I had a little trouble. I never had trouble connecting with this before. Uh, Marianne, I... I do agree with the things that you've been saying. I, I think you're right on the things that I did here. Yes. Okay. So, and I don't run an organization called Christian Atheists. Uh, the organization I run is called the Canadian oh, sorry. Atheists. Canadian. I'm so sorry. I'm, yeah, I'm okay. No problem. Yes. I just thought I'd better clear that up for anybody in the audience who's not familiar with us. And I will put a link to that <laughs> in the okay. description. Okay. I will put no. It's. I will put a link to that in the description. I, I apologize. This is like the second like significant. Um, uh, Actually, the third, if you include the, before the show, the bitch cord thing, but that's all right. Um, so I, I'm getting I a little like, tongue tied. I, like, I like the post theist term. This is, uh, it, it's very clear. It says exactly, yeah, an atheist who used to be a theist. Which is it, an, actually term. probably the, the most basic meaning of it. Yeah. Or the, isn't that yeah. kind of X, though? An X theist? Like I'm yeah. an X smoker kind of Same thing? Same thing. Um, exactly. Yeah, I, I just I think there's another layer to it, or there, or as I understand the way it's being used, and as I use it myself, um, which is that kind of. But why, you know, why do we? Why do post-theist people take the position they do? And it's because um, we feel that there needs to be this moving beyond the language and the divisions like the, the, the insistence on language and ideas um, to kind of getting at the root of things. And so getting past that whole, you know, theist debate. I see uh, atheism as among the most diverse demographics in the world. Um, the only characteristic that um, makes us a part of this demographic is not believing in deities. And uh, yes. what I find with what I find with religion is that uh, there are so many different types of religions out there, and they're competing for membership. And uh, atheism doesn't intrinsically do this. Um, the uh, also within each religion, many of them have denominations that are further divided. So they're already divided together. When somebody comes along and tells me there's so many billion Christians in the world or so many billion Muslims, my immediate question to them is, which denomination are you talking about? Oh, all of them. Oh, right. okay, interesting. Yeah. Now you're not divided when it comes to bragging about your numbers. <laughs> yeah. Yes, great point. Yeah, right. and, and and at that point, what does the word mean? If it's just is yeah. it a, if it's a census question, are you Christian or Jewish or Sikh or you know, it, it, what do we really know about why people check that box? Nothing. So how how are those numbers even meaningful? We know, like when I've talked to Christians over the years um, and Muslims as well, uh, for Christians in particular, I'll ask them what are the characteristics that they that each person thinks are required for qualifying as a Christian. And the one common characteristic that comes across all the time is a belief in the Christian God. Everything else is all over the board. And the same with Islam, it's belief in Allah. Many of them uh, say that they also worship Muhammad, but not all do, but they all believe there's Allah. So that, that seems to be the base characteristic that they all agree on. And then the denominations divided up in different ways. Is that been your experience as well? It's certainly the most common response. Yeah, I mean, I do think I run in somewhat yeah. unusual circles, but I, I want people to know those circles exist around the world. So it's kind of 
rare and not rare. Um, but yeah, why don't we, because you're speaking to that question that came up earlier, um, do you want to read it one more time there, Nick, for folks? Yes. Oh, thank you. So let's see. We've got um, a $10 super chat from Jake Forty. Jake, thank you very much once again for your continued support. And thank you, Sinister, uh, for your super chat earlier again. So, because I think I didn't thank her. But yeah, I, yeah. But, yeah. Um, so, uh, as Jake said, uh, to broaden the term uh, Christian so far as to include atheists is to uh, lose most of the value of the word. It appears you could include other religions, uh, uh, it says regions, I think he meant religions as well. Uh, one might argue it has lost all meaning. And, and I, I wonder if that's where you're going, Randolph, in that you're saying that the one commonality is this idea of the Christian God. So if you take that out, then, then what's left? Haven't we just fractured yes. beyond meaning? Well, so that's why it's, I'm tying it's the two together. I'm, yeah. Okay, yeah, it's not that I'm trying to take things out. It's just uh, what I'm doing is I'm advocating for um, people who don't believe in deities, atheists, to have the same kinds of uh, uh, respect automatically in society that theists have. Yes, well, Trying absolutely. to end the stigma, end the vilification, those sorts of things. Yes. Sorry, go ahead. No, yeah. I'm just agreeing with you. I mean, it's absolutely <laughs> ridiculous that... Uh, he's, not, he's not used <laughs> that to that. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no. I, I no, do my I best think, to disagree with him. I think I, I, I have a problem when people... Having, yeah, and I, and I find it peculiar when somebody tells me that they believe in a deity and they're also an atheist because that's a contradiction. Like, either you do or you don't. And, like, yeah, but, <laughs> and not well, that I want to reject saying. people, but yeah, okay. But, yeah. but I'm not saying that. I'm not saying I'm a theist good, who good. doesn't believe in gods. Like, that, that makes no sense, right? I mean, at some yeah, point, words yeah. do have to have a certain kind of meaning. Um, just before I get into this thought, uh, I, I was going to say, I do think Miles will back up that I'm not just nodding my head and agreeing with you. I actually have like a long history, at least, I mean, Twitter's really my main platform, of arguing with people who do denigrate atheists and do think that they're inferior in some way. Um, no. and, and ditto for, for theism. I, I, okay, so th I'm just letting you know, this is not no. like me just saying, yeah, yeah. This, this is very much oh. like what I oh, do listen. on Twitter. She gets, she gets wow. into a, a major fight, and sometimes with friends of mine, and the, the first thing I do is I say, listen, I know her, so, you know, you don't, I'm not asking you to agree with her. Believe me. Believe me. But um, <laughs> don't don't think she's disingenuous. I'll stand by the fact that she means what she says. And if you don't understand it or if it sounds weird, it probably just means listen more or just tell her she's cray-cray. You can do either, but don't don't assume disingenuous yeah. motives. But the funny thing right. is, okay. I, I do that, and then she contradicts me and says, oh, yeah, and here's where Nick screwed all this stuff up. And I was just like, I just came in on totally. your side! <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter. You so, screw up, uh, I'm going to call you out. Larry, but anyway, I've been doing the same thing. The topic. Yeah. Another month ago, okay. I was uh, pushing back against somebody who was falsely claiming that atheism is inherently racist, pointing out that that's not the case. And uh, then they got a bunch of their polytheist buddies to, uh, to gang up on me, and uh, they didn't get anywhere, and they ended up uh, throwing slurs and insults. And that's where it usually ends up with those things. So I, I yeah. totally support what you're doing and would love to connect with you on Twitter so we can help each other out in these things. Oh, let's do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You know what? We should, Nick, once you're, we're officially off the air, we should stay on long enough to swap Twitter uh, handles. We should, although, anyway. although Randolph, it's in the description. So anybody, anybody who wants to follow her on Twitter, um, it's in the description. If you want to follow and support her, I think that's fine. If you want to sw follow and troll her, I will help you get a Twitter account if you don't have one yet. <laughs> you can go in. Yes, bring uh, it up. No. <laughs> Maybe not trolling, but legit like challenges. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, and Randolph has just wandered off. I, oh, I don't mind. I don't mind some. Good, I don't mind some good quality trolling. I have uh, less than one hour that I have to make noise here, and then I, I can't make construction noise okay. anymore. So um, I okay. hope you don't mind so that I'll just the... be in the background. But go no, ahead, no, say no, what no, you no, want to no, say that's first. Fine. That's fine. Um, well, no, getting back to the question. I mean, this wasn't about me. I was simply trying to say that's legitimate, saying, yes, you're absolutely right. But moving on back to, or moving back to the question. Uh, so um, what... It, if, as Randolph said, the vast, vast majority of Christians say, well, the fundamentals here are, um, you know, belief in the Christian God and probably something to do with the belief in Jesus, right? Uh, we're saying, I don't know if Jesus ever existed is perhaps, you know, not welcome. If we can say that is basic, like 
mainstream Christianity, then what what does it mean to step outside of that? And as now you see, I've forgotten. Josh Fordy said, "Does that just like I, make it, make it um, uh, a non-starter as a concept?" Or, or a I have noticed that when Christianist. people, I have, I have noticed that when people, um, and I only learned this uh, in recent years. But what it seems to me is that when somebody leaves a religion, they're not leaving all of it at once. Uh, they're leaving bits and pieces at a time. Some take longer to get out of their system than others because uh, some things take a stronger hold for people, and it's different for everybody. Um, does this uh, sure. resonate with you? Yeah. I've certainly seen that. So, um, I'm, yeah. I'm always trying to... I'm a chess player, right? So I'm always trying to say, where is he going with this? Uh, I'm... <laughs> So is the general idea I'm not that somebody chess, is identified? So no worries. No, 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 I know. I know. But we all have like what we say and then kind of what's sitting in the back of our heads. And I'm wondering if what's in the back okay. of your head is if someone identifies as Christian and atheist, are they really basically trying to start shedding some and starting with theism, start shedding the, uh, you know, all the tropes and the, the traditions and, and just basically detach from Christianity. Is that what's in the back of your head? Like this is sort of a separation uh, stage? Not, not really. Um, all it is is okay. that um, I'm thinking that uh, what needs to happen is further conversation so I can find out and get a better understanding of what they mean by that and then work from there. Fair enough. And we should do, yeah, we, you know what, we should do that for everything. Yeah. As soon as we yeah, start thinking yeah. we know that pe what people are saying, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've, we've, we're lost and we've lost ourselves. They haven't lost us. Uh, okay. And it why unfortunately lays a foundation answer? for division. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Well, why don't I throw out my answer um, to help me, Josh 4D, is that right? Uh, uh, this yeah. question? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I, then I, you guys I, can tear it up as much as you like. Well, and we got Sorry, another go one. Ahead, we, we've got another one from uh, Sinister. I'll get to in a minute. Uh, so, but Jake's. Let me see if I can go find that one again because it, 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 they move. I've got to load this one, so you'll see me yep. loading it in the background. But I'll be listening. That's I'll fine. have the volume yeah, yeah. up, and I'll be muted. Yep. All right, Jake Forty. Cool. To broaden uh, the the term Christian so far as to include atheists is to lose most of the value of the word. It appears you could include other religions. I think you meant religions there as well. One might argue it has lost all meaning. So if 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 Christianity is going to allow people who are even willing to say eh, Jesus existed, eh, you know maybe, mm. uh, you know uh, what? Where would you where would you draw the line? Why would that word still have meaning, and or why would atheists still have meaning? Okay, uh, I'm just <clears throat> I have a couple of thoughts. Let me just compose them in order here. Okay, first of all. Um, the comment says lose most of the meaning, and that implies that theism or this whatever dogma is this person has in mind represents most of the meaning of Christianity. Okay, and that I question. I think for a lot of us, there is a wealth of meaning that goes that has absolutely nothing to do with gods or afterlife or supernaturalism in any respect. And I'm more than happy to give an example if that interests people. Um, but I personally see a wealth of meaning that, and I think it's most of the meaning for me, that uh, is entirely detached from the question of are there gods or gods? Is what's in the Bible factual or not? Is did Jesus live or not? Um, and so I, I do dispute the word most in the question. Um, so that's part of the, I think that partly answers the question in terms of you know, is there still value to the term Christian? But I also want to talk about what Christian means. And I mean, literally, right? Coming from the Greek, Christos. Um, no doubt that is a mispronunciation beyond words. Uh, but, you know, it comes from, uh, we still use the word chrism for a, a blessed oil, okay? It comes from oiling or anointing. Mm. And literally, it means uh, the person who is anointed. So. Um, now, now you can start asking, the, you know, asking yourself the question, um, who's anointed by whom to do what, right? These are the kind of questions that I find interesting. So when I talk about Christianity or being Christian, I'm talking about what we value and the idea that if people see Jesus as, as, as anointed, um, like I find the whole Christian tradition 
and much of the Bible, not all of it, um, deeply meaningful in non-literal ways. And this is just an extension of that, where I'm saying the word Christian itself is about taking what I already find meaningful um, about Jesus and saying, but what, why is that revered? Why is he considered anointed? And by whom? And to do what? And, and puzzling through these questions is a huge part of being Christian for me. So the word itself has that meaning, at least for me. You know, I'm not speaking for anyone but myself when it comes to why would someone identify as post, post theist, apatheist, you know, atheist in many cases, um, and Christian. I think there's many different reasons, but I think we all tend to share the idea that there's so much more meaning than just comes down to God said it, so you have to do it, which is, I think, what a lot of people reduce. Christianity too, is that they see the Bible as prescriptive, okay, mm -hmm. as thou shalt. Basically, the Ten Commandments writ large. This whole thing is a manual on how to live so that you can live forever in heaven. That's prescriptive. And a lot of us see it as descriptive, describing it's the chronicle of a culture and mm -hmm. how that culture saw the world and what they revered. And we have a lot to learn from that. Okay, so it, it's it's a very different perspective, and I think one has to grasp that perspective in order to start understanding how it's possible to jettison, you know, some of the, some of the dogma. So, you, so you, I, you, I'm curious to know if that's answered the question. Uh, I, I think Jake is still here, and um, uh, he's he's made a few more other comments, but hopefully, he, I mean, he can certainly uh, follow up on that, and I'll catch the follow up in a second. You've used the word. Um, Values uh, repeatedly. I know roughly what Christian values are. Um, what do you what, when you talk about values? It seems to me you have to be talking about something at least slightly different. Uh, what do you think mm -hmm. are values that might be in in uh, this church and or what would be post theist values where you could say we value something more than just Jesus? Jesus as an individual and or savior of us as individuals, you mean? Yeah, uh, Jesus in in the 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 classical okay. uh, Christian sense, yes. Jesus as God. Well, uh, I've actually probably toned it down some for this chat. You were talking about snark earlier, but I mean, I'm I can be very confrontational and and I do question everything. So when I talk about values, that 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 colors it first of all. Okay, what I'm about to say is 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 has a very confrontational point of view. Um. What, uh, I'm so sorry. I knew what, I know what I want, the example I want to give. I've forgotten how you phrased the question. What value does what have? Well, well, so you had talked about um, uh, the Canadian church and it has a, an atheist minister. You talked about the church's United values. United Church of Canada, yeah. United Church of Canada, thank you. And uh, so you had talked yep. about their values and obviously their values cannot be, literally cannot be, classical Christian values if an atheist would be allowed to, to, to preach. So uh, assuming that there's some well, dovetailing yeah. between between post-theism and or this church's values, what are those values yes. that allow them to do this and or post-theist values, at least okay. from your perspective? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, it's funny because um, they've actually made a statement. I mean, we have many statements of values, um, and they updated it. Ooh. I'm trying to, uh, I don't know, if, if within the last five years, um, and it is actually in, po in poetry form now. I mean, which right away tells you this is not prescriptive, this is descriptive, this is find meaning in this in the way that you can, right? Mm -hmm. So I, that I find fascinating that I don't know if anyone's ever seen that before, that a church when talking about who are we and what do we stand for would put it in poetic language. Um, and you know what? I really ought to pull that up for you. I'm going to try to talk and find it at the same time. <laughs> oh, well, I'll tell you, what, tell you what, we had a super chat that, that I can answer, so I will deal with the super chat. And then um, Jake did do another super chat. Uh, Jake, thank you very much. So we'll, we'll get to Jake's follow-up. So um, let me do um, Sinister's super chat. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to explain anything Here it is. about it. I found it. it. I found it. <laughs> oh, let me do the super chat because I started doing it anyway. Okay. But I'm yeah, not yeah. going to explain it because um, reasons. But I will say... It's snarky. It's snarky as just snarky AF. Two dollar super chat for Porpoise. Porpoise, thank you very much for your support. We really do appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Two dollar super chat. Um, all rocks are post theist 
Sorry. No, really? I get it. It's uh, really? all babies are atheists. No, I, I get really? the joke. I do. All rocks are. Well, <laughs> there's there's actually deeper meanings to the joke. Oh, is there? Yes. Oh, yes. Are they and she knows it. That's okay. Bad porpoise. Bad porpoise. No fish. They, Bad por porpoise. No do they fish. mean that? Uh, <laughs> no fish for you. Do they mean that implicitly or explicitly? Uh, what, <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So um, there's a there's a in the atheist community there's a, a, a rocks atheist but it, it's actually gotten really contentious so it's 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 uh... because it's only it's implicit that they would be but they're inanimate objects they're not capable of taking another position so I, I don't really like to get into this one to me it's pointless because when I'm talking about atheists I'm talking about people. And Sinister knows I, I that mean, she's just being porpoise. Correct, she's she is just being poor. I'm nope nope that that she does not represent or not represent. No, we won't. We no. so I although I make the occasional rock joke myself. But at any rate, all right. Uh, so why don't you do your thing and then Jake did have a follow up, but you found it. So this is the mission state, not the mission. Sorry, statement of values. Um, did you want to read that? Yeah, I just I just sent you the link link via you and I have a Twitter messaging yep. thing going yep. on. I sent it to you. Um, right. For those who aren't part of our little Twitter discussion, um, hang on a second. Uh, okay, so this is a poem they consulted. Anybody could have input on this, um, which is another thing. Like, not only is dissent encouraged, but like from anyone, any age, whatever. We have children like argue with the minister at church. It's super fun. Uh, okay, so there are some claims in here, I have to say. But generally, I'm not going to read you the whole thing, but it says God is mystery, uh, talks about the one eternal God seeks relationship. Well, right there, the one and eternal. You know what? <sighs> I got to say, I would be comfortable walking up to any minister in the United Church and questioning any part of this, and they would not say, what are you doing in our church? They would have a discussion with me about, oh, that's interesting. Why do you dispute that? So I don't think this is prescriptive, as I said. But mm -hmm. this is the consensus of the people who provided feedback. So the general consensus <laughs> that is, is... I'm sorry, but that is just one of the most accurate... Uh, it's clinical, but I'm just like, that's just... Uh, this is the this is not the consensus of the people there. It's not the consensus of the... Co it's the consensus of those who provided feedback. Yeah, that's exactly... It, yep. it is, yeah. Yep. Yeah, okay. and no doubt some people disputed it. But how about I say this is the majority view of the people who provided feedback? Uh, yeah, I okay. think that's the fairest. So, yeah, yeah. All right, so uh, it does talk about one eternal God. It does talk about God creates the universe. However, you see, we got to be real careful. What do we mean by that? Do we mean like old guy with a beard thought it would be a good idea to create a universe? Or do we mean that the act of creation is how some people see God? Like, I, I'm just saying, be very careful in how you read the, and, and hear this stuff. There's a reason why it's written in a poetic form. It's to encourage people to think. So try not to be unthinking and saying, oh my, you know, what's this crap about creationism? Uh, grateful for loving action. We cannot keep from singing. Um, we speak of God as one and triune, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Do you know I actually haven't seen that in the United Church? That's yeah, I, I recall them being a little more liberal than that, but I, it's been a while since I've I've uh, looked into it, yeah. obviously, because I keep calling them the Unitarian Church of... of well, yeah, to be yeah. fair, this was adopted 15 years ago. And even when it was adopted, you know, whenever you get the majority of people to agree to something, that's not the leading edge. So mm. I think we can say that 15 years ago, the comfortable middle felt this way. But if you go back, like we've got this whole history on this website of like the, the statements, you can see the evolution over time. I'm actually not relating a whole lot to some chunks of this. But I, they I do like get to... into, yeah. Go go I, ahead. Nothing. No, well, I'm done. No, I'm done. Uh, oh, well, no, I, I was I appreciating it. But I did want to point out for the audience. So you could see as she was reading it, she was contradict. She couldn't finish the yeah. sentence <laughs> without interrupting <laughs> to contradict it. She and I speak on the phone we have we haven't in a bit you know but there'll, there'll be times we'll speak like almost every day for hours and then times we won't speak for months and but when when or we're talking 
That's that's <laughs> what I have to put up with. And that's what and then I start to talk and she you know, I, I wanted to go down to the grocery store. Is is it really a grocery store, Nick? Would it be fair to say it's is it a store? Oh, Are you good? <sighs> <laughs> What's right. the history of the word store? How store. is it meaningful to us today? Mm. Okay. Um, you know what? Uh, I'm interested to know if Randolph has anything to say. And I did have an example to share about how Christianity is meaningful without necessarily relying entirely on the whole supernaturalism thing. But and I have one does question. Randolph have anything? I have one yeah. question I wanted to ask, so we'll see if Randall comes back, because I know he's busy. He's, he's building a studio, actually, for uh, True North Talk. It's going to cool. be the new show he's going to be doing with uh, Neil. He and I are going to um, uh, uh, fight for it. We're going to put gummy bears on our fists, and we're going to go at it and see who gets to um, uh, work with Neil. So, um, Super fun. That's, the, uh, okay, that's the last of the plywood. So, what did you want to ask? Uh, I guess... I I was I was about to I actually have very little time left. Um, I did promise to be off by 1030. I thought that was enough time. Uh, but I did before I get into kind of a final point did want to ask uh, from what you've been hearing as you've been schlepping stuff about in a good way. Uh, do you have any thoughts or challenges? Oh, not really. I, I like when, when you're talking about being able to go into the church and speak with the ministers and actually have a conversation. Um, I, I think that's good. Uh, it reminds me of one time when I was a kid, uh, we moved to a new neighborhood and some neighbors that we just met invited us to the local church. I've never, I've always been an atheist. I've never believed. So we went and then the, the pastor there was saying something about, um, I was a young kid still at this time, and, and they were saying something about um, God is uh, enemy, uh, greatest enemy is the devil, and the devil mm. then punishes people in hell. And I was thinking, because I came from kind of a rough part of town where this doesn't jive. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. so... Um, because the gangs don't work this way, um, so they. Uh, so I asked him. Uh, I asked my dad, and then he's uh, about this contradiction. And so he said, "Well, let's ask the pastor. He seems to be willing to talk to people on the way out. He was one of those pastors who meets and greets people at the door and at the end when they're leaving." So uh, I asked him about it, and then his response was something like, um, "And so his, I'll just wait for her." Yeah, yeah. and I, I, I okay, yeah. So. So I asked, so my dad said, well, why don't we ask this pastor? We were just waiting for you um, so you don't miss it. And and I, so I asked him at the end and his response was something like the Lord works in mysterious ways. And of course I was being a pedantic little kid, so I wasn't accepting that. I wanted a better explanation and I kept pressing and he was getting nervous and glancing at my dad a bit and, and my mom and I was still asking questions. And then finally we left. Uh, the next weekend we found ourselves unwelcome at the church. Ooh. Ooh. So, Ooh. like, yeah. don't, like, do not enter, please go home. Holy uh, crap. People would not talk with us, they wouldn't sit near us, and the pastor would look past us, and so we ended up leaving. It was very passive aggressive, kind of subtle, but my parents definitely picked up on it and thought, okay, but we just left. So well, that was fine. Just, I, I mean, I'm very <laughs> sorry to hear that. Uh, I, I genuinely, I not am going to contrast that. <laughs> No, no, I want to contrast yeah. that with what happened at my church when I ran a film group. We watched all kinds of stuff. And I know most, most pastors wouldn't be like this. But, this one guy, I guess he didn't like my question. No, no. Go ahead. Yeah. No, fair enough. But uh, I need to say that I ran a film group at my church for a few years, watched all kinds of things, including the second coming uh, TV movie, I guess, uh, featuring uh, okay. Christopher Eccleston, uh, at which at the end, the person who is the second incarnation of Jesus uh, commits suicide via rat poison. Oh. And uh, I would think I would think that many uh, churches would boot someone for showing that and actually talking about how meaningful that is but no everyone was very cool with it we had a great conversation so I, I mean i'm not trying to rub it in i'm just saying that i hear you and that's awful and i yeah. i don't think you're in the least unique but also it is oh, very oh, yeah. possible for a church to have a very different attitude oh yeah 
Yeah. So let me, yeah, let me I do notice this that the attitudes me, vary. So go ahead. Let me interrupt real quick. I, I would like the conversation to continue. We have a super chat I'd like to get to, but uh, I do know you need to go. So uh, you you should cut this well, off when you need to. I, I want to say one one or two quick things. You are on our Discord. So what I'm hoping is, since it looks like yes. you will not be yes. able to be in the Discord a voice chat afterwards, and I know people would want to chat with you, we could arrange that at some point. But maybe if you guys want to ask her questions, you can come in and at her on, and I guess Randolph might be there. I'd be, I'm going to uh, join in. Marianne probably won't be able to make it, but either we can certainly schedule something or you can at her. And then when she uh, does log into Discord, she will see a list of people who, who uh, had questions or whatever, and she can address them at her leisure if that works for you. And I just want to get that clear so you can bail then when you're ready and we don't have to, we've, we've covered all that. Does that, does that okay, sound cool. good? Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. While Randolph was talking, I felt bad not to hear it all, but my husband came to the door and said, are you almost done? And I said, well, I think we've got like about five minutes, so I still have a couple. Well, we stopped um, when you took the headphones off, so you didn't miss anything. <laughs> lies, lies. No, uh, no, if you yeah. play back, you'll but, see that. Yeah. Serious? No. He's not, no, no, he stopped. He see? stopped. He stopped. He stopped. And um, I was I was going to make fun of him, but I wasn't sure how long you were gone. And I was trying to do the timing and pacing right, so I just didn't do it. But uh, I, was, I, I, was well, I was I was negotiating for time, so I thought it was worth it. But it. anyway, <laughs> I I did feel bad. Okay. Um, God, I wanted to give an example. Is that okay? I'm kind of. Well, and I certainly also want to know what it what it means when an atheist prays. Uh, so can an atheist pray, and what does that mean? Oh, I don't know if that was an sure. example you were going to. Yeah. Oh, and then God, I, there's, I mean, there's so much we could. So much we could get this could have been two this... hours. This could have been two hours. We are not it short really of material could. here. But um, so no, pick and we need a part two. I mean, and what? I think we do. Yeah. And what does faith mean? Because yeah. oh my goodness, am I tired of threads on Twitter where uh, part of me is like, why do people keep posting questions when they know what all their friends think? And I, I think people just love to hear it. And people all jump in and go, faith is believing bullshit, and faith is believing things without any evidence, mm. and it's fairy tales, and it's and I'm like, there is so much more to it. When we talk about like a faithful spouse, when we talk about um, keep the faith, you know, like, yeah, there's so much more. But what was your question? Prayer? Yeah, what does Some people mean? are just looking for it. Like, yeah. Can an atheist pray and what prayer, does it mean if they do? Yeah. yeah. Sure. I mean, intercessionary, you know what? I think that gets into, is that in post-theistic spaces? I think it is. That link that was already shared. Um, prayer can mean a ton of things too. And in some cases, it's uh, the Quaker... Quaker meetings are a beautiful example. I've already said that's kind of where my heart is, um, where everyone sits in sort of expectant silence. And this isn't expecting miracles. This isn't demanding something necessarily of a theistic God, although if you want to have that attitude, that's also fine. It's the idea that if we stop and listen to ourselves, to each other, uh, sometimes it's, you know, if we stop and really pay attention to just breathing and being in the room, um, that sometimes we have insight or a sense of unity mm. or, or that there are benefits. And if people do feel they have insight, they're welcome to stand up in the middle of this silent gathering, share their insight, sit down. And the, and nobody's sitting there, you're not supposed to anyway, sitting there like debating in your head, are they right or wrong? But just, hey, that person felt led in this moment to share that. And when I say led, it, it doesn't have to mean led by God. It, I mean, there's anyone can think what they want about where the leading comes from. It can be led by their own um, their own history, their own conscience. Their you know, throw in what you want. So I mean, that's a, that's a form of prayer. It's just that kind of um, mindfulness, and that is across traditions. I'm not just talking Christianity and or specifically Quakerism. This is in religions around the world where there are forms of prayer that are simply being. So I think a lot of people hear prayer and think intercessionary prayer. Like, please intercede. You're asking someone some things um, in, yeah. in this problem. That's typical. Right? Yeah. That, that is very yeah. typical and it is incredibly narrow. It is one lar large, I will grant lar large, but still one facet of a many faceted thing. Some people, I, I yeah. Yeah. Some people see prayer as meditation. Yeah. Some people see prayer as meditation. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, you know what? The oh God, I can't get off the Quakers. But you know what they have? They have something called advices and queries. And this is a book that's been published for hundreds of years. It's updated every couple of years. It's a little pamphlet. You can buy it for like fifty cents. Uh, and 
it's just a list of questions. Have you considered how you're being mindful today is the kind of thread that one, you know, one of them might be. But have you considered how your actions affect X, Y, or Z? This is a form of prayer. This is what they're saying is it's more important to ask the questions than to beg for answers or intercession or what, what have you. Hmm. So I just, I just want to encourage people to think very carefully about, you know, again, how do we hear words and what do we assume? I think that's uh, a constructive yeah, I really, approach, I, actually. Yeah, well, I did say my heart was there. I'm very biased, so yes. Uh, I do <laughs> have to go in like a minute, so I'm just, can I please give one example here? Please, please, please. I was looking forward to it, so please. Okay, so um, just, just one more thought going back to the whole what's the point of being um christian if you're going to toss out the the supernaturalism uh i wonder how many people are familiar with the salt march uh gandhi's salt march across india uh he got arrested at the end of it it was a pilgrimage to the sea to pick up handfuls of salt which first of all you you ask yourself why would somebody undertake this enormous voyage and and all these people joined him i don't know the numbers but i mean it was a mass by the time they got to the sea and then he was arrested because the whole point of the thing was that british law uh well i mean the brits were in control of india at that point right um and their law was that indians could not collect salt because the idea was that it was a british controlled industry salt production and so even to go to the ocean and pick up symbolically a handful of salt was um, a form of resistance, right? Uh, but if you didn't have the context, if you did not know about that law, then you'd say, this is a stupid story, it cannot possibly be true. And if it is true, they were insane, right? Like, and none of it makes any sense. And that's very much why I value, it, it's along the same lines of knowing the context makes me value Christianity in ways that I really can't explain um, mm -hmm. because I would have to explain so damn much, frankly, like I, I can't be giving, you know, 10 hour lectures and that would be the intro. Uh, but, you know, just to give and, and here's the other half of that example. So the matching example of resistance that looks stupid is uh, if people know the Palm Sunday story of Jesus gets his disciples to go get a, a donkey and then comes riding into like Jerusalem on a donkey and it's the beginning of Passover, right? So all the, it's the beginning of the big celebration of Passover and there's all these people coming along with Jesus like waving palms, hence Palm Sunday, big deal. This looks crazy. What is the point of this? Are people going, we love Jesus? Where were they when he got executed? Yada, yada. You have to know the context which is that there was a long history before and after that, that particular point that it would have been in time where uh, Jews were rebel not only rebelling against the Romans, but particularly at Passover, because the story of Passover is about uh, fighting oppression, right? Fighting the Egyptian control. And so if people were gonna revolt, that was the time. And so you had the Romans doing a big military display to control crowds. Now, how, how do you control crowds? Well, I don't know about in other cities, but Toronto certainly has mounted police. And the Romans loved that. You wouldn't just have the soldiers, you'd have them riding around on their war steeds, right? Because crowds will not attack a horse generally. Okay, fine. So you've got that going on, that is tradition. And now you've got a guy marching into town at the same time on a donkey with people hailing him like he's the king. Are you seeing how this is a form of resistance? And I'm not giving you the, mm -hmm. the full story, but that's the gist of it. So that's an example of where I find meaning in the Bible and in Christianity that quite frankly has nothing to do. I don't care if this happened or didn't happen. It speaks to me mm -hmm. in terms of how can we take action when we see oppression, when we see abuse of power. So I, I'm just, I'm still trying to answer that question and it's a tough one, but what is the point without gods is the question. What, that's what it boils down to. And I'm just trying to yeah. give people food for thought that there is often more meaning, at least for some of us, than you may realize. All right, I think, uh, uh, or, I'm kind yeah. of doing a Marianne, mic drop. Thank you very much. Go. Yeah, thank you very much for joining us, Marianne. We'll catch up and we will do a part two. Thank you very Take much care, for joining Marianne. us. That was, that was fantastic. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And I look forward to speaking with you, Randolph, and anyone who wants to chat, I would love it.
So thank you. All right, Bye-bye. thank you. We'll, we'll sort that out. Thank you. So uh, uh, I would like to chat with Randolph a bit a bit uh, more in a second, but just to, to okay. reiterate, uh, she's, uh, she's already in the Discord. And so you can come join us on the Discord and uh, ask her any questions. I would like to see if we can schedule her to come in and uh, maybe chat, because I, I think there are a lot of people who had some questions that they wanted to ask her. Jake, I did not get to, uh, we sort of touched on, on your follow-up, and I really appreciate the, the follow-up super chat, and we're going to make sure that um, she gets a chance to answer that in particular, because, uh, you know, I think it's, uh, I think she would want to, and it's a good question. You saw she already took your last one seriously. And um, uh, Randolph looks like he got cut off, but he's actually still here. The cameras are, are switched. I'm still so, here. yeah, yeah, yeah. Your 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 camera closed, but you're still here. Uh, the, uh, it closed on our side. We've had some confusion, so the, the the shield went down. I can bring that back up in a minute. But and then uh, the other thing is, of course, uh, feel free to leave any questions too in the uh, in the descri- in the comments below. Leave a comment below. Uh, Marianne is very thorough about this, and as you have no doubt. Uh, determined she takes this very seriously and she really she enjoys the engagement oh. you can also follow her twitter it's down there and we have with us randolph to i think maybe uh, wrap up this conversation a little bit more and then i think we are going to have to definitely schedule a part two uh to this because this was uh going so well and i hope randolph you'll join us for that but so uh, what are you gonna say I'd, randolph? To. Well, I'd like to reflect on what she was saying um i do think that there is uh uh, a combination of good things in religious texts as well as bad things and so somebody asked me a long time sorry randolph i accidentally cut your mic there hold on there you go uh, you were saying somebody asked you a long okay. time yeah somebody asked me quite a while ago if i had the magical power to rid the world of all religion would I do it? And I answer the same. My answer is the same as Christopher Hitchens, who uh, said this first. Um, it's consistent with my advocacy for freedom, intellectual freedom, uh, freedom of opinion, freedom of expression, and whatnot. Um, I wouldn't do it. And Christopher Hitchens was uh, asked on in a private conversation, not knowing he was on camera, and uh, he he said that uh, he would not use that power to do that. Uh, he. Didn't I don't remember him elaborating on the why though but on the actually, reason for it. He, he actually admitted he didn't know why and he couldn't answer why. Um, oh, I have I, a reason. I, for my yeah, yeah. So you you you're a step yeah, ahead. And, and that is because what I would be doing if I was to do that, I would be taking away people's opportunity to think for themselves and make up their own minds on it. And to me, that would be counter to the advocacy that I do in favor of people's personal freedom, personal sovereignty, etc. And so I wouldn't do it. And of course, Neil just showed up, so it, it's Canadian night here. I don't even know. Well, you guys don't even need, I'm just going to log out. And Hello, Neil. Neil, Neil will take this window, and apparently this isn't an American show anymore. You Canadians oh, are Neil's coming joining. in, Great. taking over our shows, burning down our White Houses. It's, it's chaos. It's anarchy. So, so I think um, uh, I yeah. think your guest I think your guest had a lot of wonderful insights to share. I really enjoyed listening to her. Um, I wished I could have heard all of it. Um, I'm glad that I heard as much as I did. Well, thank you, and I'm really glad you came in. I think that was a good a good pairing. And as you know, I, I mentioned her to you a few times because I thought you you guys would be interesting. And you're you know. You know I, I don't know if Canada's a, a large place, so I don't know how close you guys are. But she has insight that I think can be very helpful, and she enjoys. Yeah, I don't she, know. Which- I, I don't know which province she's in, and uh, yes, Canada is uh, larger than the USA if you count the amount of land that we have. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, uh, but we'll bring her back for a <laughs> second one. Because yeah. <laughs> you mentioned we're, you think we're larger. <laughs> oh uh, well, I, I, well, I said it was a large. Area. Oh, never mind. You're just you're just you're just going to be a pain in the. Uh, I'm I, just I, I'm just I joking. Totally with you, don't worry, but I'm serious. It is a bit larger. Yeah. Okay. You know what? I'm. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna shut your mic. And I'm gonna shut your camera there. So. Oops. I think you shut yourself off. <laughs> uh, Did you just it. shut yourself off? No. I. I love your. No. I love your sense of faint humility, man. I really do. <laughs> um. <laughs> You're right. an awesome host. <laughs> well, thank you. I do my best. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. I'm really glad that you um, you came in. I, I try to be a little careful with that because you never know how the guest is going to feel, but I have known her for about five years, and I figured she'd appreciate it, and I think that worked out well. Yeah. So uh, to everybody watching now, we're going to do a follow- We're going to do a second follow-up, and um, I definitely want to make sure that um, Jake 4 ds question gets followed up on, because it's also a, a valuable question, and I'm going to... Can we mute you just for a sec? I, I, 
Because there's definitely yeah. background. Oh, you want me to mute myself? Yeah, if you would, please. Okay. That way you can. Much, oh, much better. There was definitely some uh, some some back, bad background noise back there. But uh, we're, we're going to uh, continue this, folks. I think this is worth continuing, and I think there's a, a lot more to get into. I think Jake's question of if, because it does, it is, I think, irrefutably a watering down of almost all of the terms that we commonly use, including atheist and certainly, certainly Christian. I did want to, um, and I didn't do this while she was here, uh, I did want to, and I'm going to do this real quick, um, uh, I'm looking up the definition of Christianity, and I've done this more than once, and what I find interesting about this is that in most of the generally accepted uh, Bibles, which would be um, uh, Webster's or anything like that, what you'll usually find, and I'm, I'm having issues, so I'm, I may leave it alone, but what you'll usually find actually is that the, the first one is, in fact, uh, the first definition is, in fact, believing in Jesus as the Son of God and all these other things. But the second one usually is, the second definition is uh, uh, believing in the teachings of Jesus. And that's an interesting one because with, I think, one short exception, Jesus, and even that one is, is, is arguable. It's arguable whether or not Jesus ever claimed to, to be the Son of God, and certainly it, he didn't make as big a deal of that as many of his followers did. So one could say you could believe in uh, his values and his principles and teaching on an eye for an eye or let, let you uh, uh, let the, uh, the one without sin catch the first stone. Um, and I think I am not the one to opine on that. I think that's our guest, but uh, that's some stuff that I think we should definitely get into. And if you decide that that is a Christian, are you making the term Christian uh, irrelevant? And, you know, I think, oh, no true Scotsman. We're, we're going to be all over the map on that one. But uh, thank you all who have um, super chat. Thank you all uh, for joining us. If you've gotten this far in the stream, I assume that means you've enjoyed yourself. Please like and subscribe. It really does help us out. Uh, and if you like this show, uh, please consider becoming a patron. It's a, a great way to help and support us, especially since we have a tendency to be demonetized. I've already, uh, this is not a joke, uh, we, we've uh, we've we've gotten limited on this one. I don't I don't think we're going to be fully demonetized, but because it's sensitive, about half the advertisers on YouTube will not advertise on it. So which is which is fine. But um, so if you like and support the show, that's that's one way to help us. Another way is to just come in and hang out with us on the Discord and uh, participate in the conversation. So I hope everyone will do that. I will be in the Discord in a little bit. I have to go put my uh, children to sleep and make sure everyone is uh, uh, is uh, tucked in and safe. And then after that, I will be joining. I hope uh, Randolph, you will be joining. Any any parting words, Randolph? Oh, well, thank you for uh, bringing me into this. I uh, really appreciate your guest um, talking about all of this. Uh, Post-theist is, is a new term to me, and uh, it just sounds to me like ex-theist, uh, possibly with uh, a bit more... Um, kind of inevitability hinted in it, um, but uh, I didn't get to mention that to her earlier. Uh, but yeah, we can talk about it next time. Uh, I think uh, she's got an interesting uh, approach with all of this, and uh, I, I think it's uh, we need more of this kind of diversity in the atheism demographic. Uh, and we have uh, Maya, uh, Maya for zero dollars and zero cents. It wouldn't be an in-time show if it started on time and there weren't tech goblins. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, $5 super chat. Uh, Neil the six so for atheist. Oth he's an atheist. Um, uh, oh. Yeah, and it's five Canadians, so it's probably not worth a whole heck of a lot. But we appreciate it anyway. Five, dollar, uh, five Canadian dollars uh, from Neil. Uh, quote, watch out for um, a timeout. Coming or watch for timeout coming soon. I'm looking forward to it. As I said at the start of this show, uh, we're going to be having um, uh, Neil on. We're going to be doing uh, our our shows on Fridays, and it's I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So I am really looking forward to that. Uh, also, I do think the only other I will thing I was, say yes. I, I will say that uh, like Dogecoin, the Canadian currency is undervalued. Yeah. Uh, 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 <laughs> And shouldn't you be apologizing for that, frankly? But um, <laughs> I, I am thinking because the way this software works, um, I can actually basically mirror these controls anywhere I want to. So I'm curious. It, it may make for a poor show, but it's time out, right? So technically, 
if he had a mirror set of these controls, we could time each other out if we didn't like what the uh that i i'm tempted but i'm really scary that half of the show is just gonna be us pushing buttons trying to figure out how to time the other one out so this may be i'm opposed to censorship so it'll be a failed experiment i can tell you right now mm, okay well I, I yeah i time you out but i'm gonna end up shutting my own uh, screen again so maybe i won't touch anything that's funny uh, uh, <laughs> Um, all right, Jake, uh, Jake 4D, $2 super chat. Uh, I miss anything. Thanks for the show. Thank you, Jake, very, very much for your uh, support. It, it really means a lot. So thank you. Uh, so uh, we're going to wrap this up. Like I said, Discord, you can talk to her in Discord. She's, she's, um, we can tag her. Just come on in to, to our Discord. I'll be in the VC in a few. She will be in the VC at some point, and we will do uh, part two to this as soon as possible. This Friday, we're going to have on, uh, uh, Nate, 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 Nate Dog, uh, he's going to be on with us. We're going to do a, yeah, it's going to be fun. And uh, you know what? You could come on in and join well, us. Nice it's it's well, going to be another call-in show. Uh, so yeah, except I think I think I think we may block certain countries entire, but we'll 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 make that decision now. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's going to be another call-in show, open hangs. So we're going to have people coming on in and uh, having a good time. So I hope you'll join us. That's this Friday. And until then, uh, thank oh, you all. And yes. to our audience, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Appreciate it. Thank you all. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for your support. Thank you for tuning in. And <laughs> we will catch you guys Friday. Later.